These are the best basketball performance sneakers for wide footers and heavy guards coming from a heavy guard, guys. Yes, and Andrew, not only a heavy guard, a heavy guard with very wide feet. Um, listen, guys, uh, a lot of people have been asking us for more basketball performance sneaker content. Of course, we used to make a ton of basketball material in the past. Uh, this is kind of just a way to update people because people want to hear about this. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you this, Andrew, most sneaker reviewers on YouTube have narrow to normal feet. They do not have wide feet and they're not heavy guards. We need wide foot representation. That's what this list is for. So hopefully if you are a wide footer and you're wondering like, ah, oh, all these new shoes are a little too narrow. The arch is this way, blah, blah, blah. Hopefully this video helps you, okay? Or if at least you learn more about your foot so that you can identify shoes for yourself. So make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications, Andrew. But you know what is one thing, an item that fits any size? Small uh, sauce. I know this is random to talk about in a sneaker video, but it is our very own chili oil. Check out the Instagram or the website. You can buy it right now. It is delicious. Italian, Chinese, got a little bit of truffle in it. Goes great on everything. I'm telling you guys, I'm built like Eric Gordon, Andrew, Eric Bledsoe, Kyle Lowry, Jameer Nelson, Baron Davis, Deron Williams, Ray Felton, Jamal oh, Tinsley, David, Anthony don't. Johnson. But don't don't say Khalid El Amin, though. Wow, if you say Kyle Lowry, you know, Kyle Lowry's trendy on the internet. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm thick. Uh, but yeah, so I guess, David, how can people identify their feet? Because some people actually don't even know if they have wide feet. Yeah, well, here's the thing. A lot of feet, they come in sort of different shapes and sizes. So you can measure the width. For me, I'm a 2E. But it's true. You could even have a skinny foot and have a crazy bunion that shoots out like a weird angle. Mm. Uh, I'm not necessarily referring to that situation. I can only speak for my situation. I actually have a normal arch. For example, Andrew, that's going to impact it as well. Yes, you have a flat arch. Yes, I I have a fallen arch. Shout out to the flat footers out there. Also, I have a fairly narrow foot, but I didn't really need anybody to tell me that because every time I laced up a pair of shoes, I would have to tie it super tight. You got to choke your laces. To get that fit. Yeah, I have, I have thin ankles too. So it's like, Overall, I just kind of have a skinny foot. Right, right, right. So there is other factors at play here. Like you said, even like ankle size and like mm -hmm. foot volume and like mass and like depth. There, there's all these stuff like midfoot shapes and stuff like that. Did you know they've even categorized like different races of people, how their foot is? Uh, Andrew, me and you would fall under Mongolian. Big shock. Mm, what about Orient? That's not us. Oh, yeah. that oh, Orient that's, or Mongolian. No, yeah, I guess we would be Orient or Mongolian depending on the toe size. Wow, that's these hilarious. are some funny little, like, graphics. Yeah. Um, Andrew, my number one shoe for heavy, wide-footed guards that you can buy right now that I actually think is heavily, heavily underrated is the Jordan 37 mid, and to a lesser extent, the Jordy 37 low. Mm. I'm telling you, especially the mid, the lena weave upper, it can really accommodate a wide midfoot and a wide forefoot. And this shoe, Andrew, gives you crazy bounce because of this gigantic carbon fiber shank plate and double stack zoom in the forefoot. Because, Andrew, if you're a heavy guard, you probably want a lot of pop and you probably want a lot of energy return because you're going to throw a lot of energy into the shoe. Right, you can't get that mushy cushioning or else you're just going to be flattening it like a pancake. And I'm not going to lie, Nike does have a monopoly on the super pop in the forefoot. No, in because- In terms of giving you the crazy energy return from the midfoot uh, shank, carbon fibers, and things like that. Zoom air, double stack zoom air, it is an amazing cushioning, to be honest. Now, I will say this, Andrew, the traction on these is like barely getting it done. Why, you, why? For some reason, this traction pattern, unless the court is very clean, it will struggle on dust. Mm. And this is actually the Chinese pair. It's a PF with an even wider forefoot. These are the Guai Lun PEs on the Jordan 37 low. I cannot hoop in this anymore because if you play on a dusty court and most courts that are not like pro courts or college courts are dusty, you will slip out. Okay. So, and, so clean courts only for this. Yeah, so that is the unfortunate downside, but you know, that's the reality. Not, nothing's going to be perfect guys. Not every shoe is going to be like 10 out of 10 at everything. Next up, Andrew, I've got the big three, 3.0 pro. Mm. This is definitely something I can uh, recommend. You know, who's wearing this still in the NBA right now? Yeah. KCP. Contavious oh. Caldwell Pope. And um, yeah, this Andrew is like a beefed up Harden 3. And the Harden 3, you got to tell some stories about that. Yeah, I love the Harden 3. It's one of the best shoes uh, with full length boost. And I thought it was, uh, it was a great shoe. Uh, I wish that they just built upon it and made that better. And that would have been... They could have kept going. Right. Like, why didn't Adidas make yeah. this big 3 3.0 Pro? They also, Dimwitty Warp, 
So, David, tell us about Big Three. Hold it up more towards uh, your left side. Your left side. Yeah. Yeah. So, this is a Chinese shoe brand. Yes. But and it's a high quality Chinese shoe brand. And it's where would you rank it to Li Ning? Because so, most people know Li Ning, Way of Wade. All right. So, there's basically like two tiers of Chinese shoe brands, but they still even have like their own tiers within them. Li Ning is by far the most expensive. Wow, 10, an amazing shoe. You know why I didn't make the list, Andrew? It's for narrow footers. Oh. This shoe is the highest end shoe from a second tier brand. Okay. 361. But you would say it's comparable to a Nike or maybe an Adidas? I would say this is a, a better version of an Adidas shoe because wow. with the injected nitro, nitrogen injected foam pellets, Andrew, Chinese brands are giving you more energy return than Adidas is right now. Because would you agree nitrogen with me? Nitrogen injected. Sometimes boost is kind of mushy. And it doesn't necessarily give you the bounce back. Boost is a little bit inconsistent with yes. the implementation. Yeah, that, like Adidas's bounciest technology is probably Bounce Pro, mm -hmm. not Boost, right? Um, moving on, Andrew, number three, I've got the Jordan 34 Mid. Wow. I'm telling you, this is an incredible shoe. Yes, if you're more than 2E, 3E, 4E, this is not going to be for you. I think as a 2E, I barely crammed in there. You're saying for super wide footers, is this probably is not, not a good thing. option. But I'm telling you, if you're a heavy guard, this Eclipse plate will give you crazy spring back. It'll help you run up and down the court. Mm. It'll help you with your verticality, jumping up in the air. It'll just make things feel a lot easier when you're just moving laterally, but specifically front to back. Right, right, and right. There is a reason why all the marathon runners are setting world records in uh, the Vaporfly percentages right now uh -huh. because they also have a gigantic carbon fiber shank plate in them too. Yes, they do. So they're giving the, uh, the spring back effect. Moving on, Andrew, I've got the LeBron 10 and the LeBron 10 Elite. Mm, this now, is like an all-time shoe. Yes. I mean, this is a gigantic... A lot of people think this is Air Max, Andrew. This is Air Zoom Max. Yeah, I mean, no, you need to... Dude, if you're a big guy, if you're especially if you're like honestly 230 pounds and up... You could wear this shoe. Yes. You should be wearing this shoe. And uh, I believe they retro too. So you don't get the retros if you can't get the old version. But, you know, you, you just got to pay the resale. Listen, um, moving on, Andrew, this is sort of an extension of the LeBron 10, but with a little bit more flexible upper. You can get this for cheap right now. Number Coming in at number five is the LeBron 18. I see a lot of people still have the 18s, man. Yeah. And this is, uh, it has double stack zoom in the front, but then it has a big Max Air in the Surprisingly, heel. Surprisingly, I will tell you guys one thing, that for a narrow footer like myself, I can somehow wear the LeBron 18 low. Right. I think the low is meant for medium regular footers. The regular 18 might be a little bit wider. I, ha I can't really wear those, but I can wear the 18 lows for some reason. If you have knee pain... Get yourself some LeBron 18s immediately. You can get They're the EP2s. Shoes. Like I said, the EPs and the PFs from China and or the XDR rubber, it does make the traction 10 to 15% worse. So you have to judge. It's very situational, right? Mm. You have to know what type of courts you're playing on and almost in a way, even how your foot strikes are. If you're an incredibly right. shifty player, traction becomes a higher priority for your individual situation. Moving on, number six, we got the Why Not 0.1. Mm. This was a classic shoe from, and uh, interestingly enough, Andrew, they, they like stopped using the Zoom setup with just full length Zoom in it. Right. Like now they're just only doing Zoom Strobel. Mm. And they're, they're obviously they've uh, ended the Westbrook line now. Moving on, number seven, Andrew, is the Peak Tai Chi Flash 2.0. I actually had it with me. I can't find it right now. But this is actually another cheaper Chinese brand, Peak but this is one of their higher end shoes for, for Lou Williams. And the cushioning on this for heavy guards was insane. Oh. You know why? Because it took China's version of bounce, China's versions of boost, and another little like gel puck insert called a P-Soon puck and combined them all together in the forefoot. So, but the only Multiple downside- Multiple techs. I would say the only downside was the P-Soon gel it wears out kind of quickly. Okay. Um, moving on to number eight, Andrew, we've got the LeBron 15 low. I know you could wear this shoe too. Mm, it was okay. It's a, it's definitely got a wide base. I've seen a lot of heavy dudes. I've been balled up by many heavy guys in this shoe. Yes. Yeah. And I'll tell you this, the way that the outsole is curved, the heel to toe transition for a heavy guard is incredible. Dude, it, it is a really cool looking shoe too. And then uh, I, they should retro this, honestly. They got the battle knit uppers. Moving on, Andrew, I am, you know, putting an asterisk by this. Number nine, I'm talking about the Zoom BB NXT and the GT Run, which are actually very similar shoes to each other. Interestingly enough right now, Andrew, the GT Run, 
being worn by Victor Wembanyama. Wow. BB NXT was being worn by, I believe, Ben Simmons and uh, Mason Plumley. So definitely some really heavy dudes. Mm. Um, I would say this shoe was really crazy because you had triple stack react in the heel and you had double stack zoom in the front. But the only thing was I did get an Achilles strain in this line. Mm. So if you, so got, do you think that's maybe just a freak thing that happened, like it's maybe maybe not everybody's going to go through. No. That. I, I, all right. Depending on how your body is your Achilles may get extra strain from wearing the BB NXT or GT run because the cushioning is very high. It can be very mushy, but then the cut of the shoe is very low. That's what my orthopedic surgeon told me. Wow. He said that this shoe does not have good Achilles support. Moving on to number 10, Andrew. We're back with Lee Ning. We have the Ushuai 14 Boom and Boom Low. I have the Boom Mid right here. This is an expensive shoe. Jimmy Butler wore this for multiple years. Yeah. So I actually think this is a really good shoe. It's a little hard to put on, but the only thing I will say, and I do really like this shoe, is the four foot cushioning with the foam. It's like, there's a lot of it, but I wish you could even get more bounce back effect from it. But it's just tough for like the boom cushioning to imitate the feeling that Zoom gives you. Mm -hmm. um, also, the you know, I think if it's not on a clean court, it is kind of questionable. Moving on, Andrew, we're talking about the Kyrie Infinity EP, the wide foot version. Have you seen any shoe be worn more recently than the Kyrie this Infinity? This is such a popular shoe. I would say it's a very much go-to, like, sneaker shoe. If you just need one for, like, you can get a pair probably for 90 bucks right now. I would say it's definitely worth right, it. Right, because you're going to get zoom in the heel, zoom in the front. Yeah. It's really flexible for any sort of, like, non-pro player. Really gives you everything you need. Mm. Um, moving on, Andrew, the number 12, the Jordan 31. Wow. Man, this was such a classic shoe. The upper, it's going to stretch to your foot. It had the zoom unit protrude out of the bottom. However, I will say this, Andrew, the traction was like a four out of 10. Dang. Four, once you get your, your tractions below a six, it could ruin your whole day because if you slip out, you can get injured. Yeah. Moving on to number 13, Andrew, we're just going to go through the Jordan line real quick and uh, talk about it real quick for how it was for wide heavy guards because Jordan was kind of heavy and most of the shoes are built for heavier guys to wear. Right. Um, Andrew, Jordan 28 had a crazy bounce effect. However, the zoom bags in the front would explode. Right, right, right. They would I pop. that issue. Jordan 29 to Jordan 30, pretty high ranked, too narrow for me. Jordan 31, like we said, amazing cushioning, but uh, I feel like basically the traction was too bad. The Jordan 32 was a little too narrow for me. The Jordan 33 had a horrible fit. Nobody liked those in the whole NBA except LaMarcus Aldridge. Moving on to Jordan 34, amazing but it is expensive, and I'm not going to lie. This shoe does break down fairly quickly. Like, you don't have that many wares in a shoe where the Blue Void resale is like $400 right now. Right. So do you want to buy a shoe, or do you want to go get the Jordan 37 for $100 right yeah, now? Yeah, that's a good shoe. It's very light, though. Yeah. Jordan 35, maybe even better than the Jordan 34, but it had a crazy eclipse plate jut out into your foot. And literally, some, like I wore it one time. I couldn't even walk for like two hours afterwards. The Jordan 36, that's a dope shoe. A lot of double stack cushioning in the front. Great for heavy guards. However, the traction, 50-50, and it was a little too narrow. And of course, like we said, you know, Jordan 37, great for me. I love this shoe. I think that the Formula 23 puck in the heel, a lot of people say it's too hard, but actually on the later versions, like for example, this undefeated colorway, it is softer. Mm. Like, But yeah, I, I know on the earlier colorways, this heel part was like actually really painful for some people before right. the break-in. And the Jordan 38 just dropped. I can't even get my hands on a pair right now. Nike, you know, the Nike in New York doesn't even have them, but this looks like a pretty good shoe. But shoes that I recently got that I think are also good for heavy guards, Andrew, the KD 16. Wow. Now, KD, usually that's my line that I love, and it fits narrow footers very well. But you're saying this might be the first KD that wide footers can wear. Yeah. I believe the KD line is shifting away from stuff that is f more for lighter, smaller guards or lighter wings to heavier wings. Mm. Because this shoe is heavily based off the Penny 2. And the Penny 2 is a little bit more of a maximalist shoe. So shout out to the KD16. I will say that it took me four or five wears to break it in on the sides, but finally, you know, it did break in. But I will say this, this traction pattern can also struggle on dust. So it really depends. It, it's kind of situational. Uh. Uh, Andrew, New Balance. So everybody's talking about the two-way V4. Everybody's talking up New Balance, but I'll tell you this, I'm gonna try them on. I just do not believe in the New Balance cushioning. Right. Because the Kawhi line, it's weird because Kawhi is so heavy. There's no cushioning. Uh, moving on, Andrew, we've got the GT Jump 2. 
you know, I, I don't have it yet, but you know, it's a little bit soft in the heel for me, but for heavy guard, guards with wide feet, maybe looking at the EP pair. And uh, Andrew, what do you think about what Puma's been doing lately? Obviously with the Scoot Henderson line, the uh, Puma Nitro Pro, or the MBO3. Yeah, I mean, I feel like Scoot is, is he, I wouldn't maybe classify him as a heavy guard, but he's definitely not a light guy. I don't know, he might be heavy though. Is he considered heavy? I mean, look at his body. Well, then you got to check out his shoes. Yeah, yeah. so uh, that's why I'm looking at the Puma Nitro Pro. Let me know what you guys know in the comments section below. So um, ultimately, yeah, that was my list of shoes that you can buy right now, whether in retro format or the current format for guards, Andrew, that have wide feet and their body is heavy wow. and they probably take heavy steps. Mm -hmm. And you know why I think this is so important? Because so much advice out there is not tailored for this niche demographic. Right. So, I, I mean, I just feel like that people need to think about the shoes they have because a lot of people, what they do is they just buy a shoe and most people, they don't want to be a sneaker freak about it. They just want to buy one shoe, hoop in it until it's worn out, even if it kind of chafes their foot or squeezes their foot. They don't understand how bad that is for your foot if you continually play in a a shoe that is too narrow for you. Yes. If you are playing basketball and you're not thinking about what type of foot you have, do you have bunions? Do you have an extra big midfoot? Do you have an extra wide forefoot? Does your pinky toe kind of curl out in a world weird way? Why would you put yourself sure. through that pain because you're not having all the optionality on the table. Like if you've already broken in a shoe, your foot should not keep aching after you play basketball. There's something is wrong. Three times max, to be honest. Right. So the reason why I have a lot of recent shoes on this list is because I truly believe that sneakers are like cars. Even though, yes, I agree, maybe they may be cheaping out on some of the material items. They're using way less leather now or even going leatherless. But I generally think, and this is not a crazy statement, even though some old school heads, they're like so trapped in the 90s. Shoes get better, just like car tech, Andrew. Cars, they get better. Right, right. Cars right. get better, sneakers get better, guys. And uh, you just got to know what is the right one for your foot. But that means you got to study your foot, know your foot, know what type of arch you have, know your widths and things like that. What you like, what you don't like. Do you like a really tight fit? Do you like a really loose fit? Everybody is going to be different. It's situational. It depends on what court you're on. It depends on even how you play. If you play full court, you might need a shoe with a really stiff carbon fiber shape plate to propel you down the court like a marathon runner. If you're only playing half court, you might want to just get a loose shoe that's uh, very good laterally like a Kyrie. Yeah. Listen, guys, let us know what you guys think in the comments section below. A lot of people were asking for performance basketball sneaker content. We hadn't given you guys one in a while. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. What shoes are great for you? And you might need to do a narrow, lighter list soon. Maybe I will. Let me know in the comments if I should. And until next time, everybody, we out. Peace. Peace.